right, we are moving on to probability today. Put your phones and your earbuds away. We discovered yesterday, it seems easy until it's not, right? It gets real complicated real quick. So get the distractions out of the way. Phones, earbuds gone. All right. Today we're doing probability. So what's the probability of picking a red M&M out of a bag of multicolored M&Ms? What is the probability of picking a boy out of this classroom? What is the probability of doing something? Okay. So we're not doing percentage. We're doing probability. We should just say it stays a decimal. Um, we're going to be using equations and stuff to help us. They're going to seem kind of redundant because you're like, well, Miss Simler, I can just look at the Venn diagram and get my answer. You're not wrong. The thing is why we're doing all these formulas today is because you have to do the formulas tomorrow. Okay, so yesterday was pure logic. Today is a mix of logic and formulas. Tomorrow you're only using formulas. Okay, so you got to stay with me. You got to be able to understand how the formulas are being written using the logic you already have. Okay, first thing, we have a dodecahedral die, which is a, a dice with 12 sides. Okay, what, when it's rolled, how many possible results do we have? 12, right? The numbers, we have the numbers 1 through 12. So there's 12 possible outcomes if I roll this die. How many ways could an even number come out of it, though? Six different ways, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. So there's six possible ways where I could get an even number. So twelve possible results. If I want to just even, and then they come down to only six possible results. Okay. So to get the probability, think in your head. If I said, okay, well, what's the probability of you rolling an even number? Probability, not percent. Mm -hmm. 0.5. 0.5, yeah, 0.50. The probability is 0.5 or 50% chance, right? How did he just come up with that number? Where did 0.5 come from? Half the dice are even. Is that the same thing as saying 6 divided by 12? Yes. Yeah, so technically, you did this formula in your head without knowing you did it. Okay? So to find the probability of an event, is to do the number of outcomes in that event divided by the number of outcomes in the entire sample space. Okay, The probability of an event will always be between 0 and 1 inclusive, which means we can include 1. What would a probability of 1 mean to us? 100%, right? If I have a bag of blue M&Ms, what's the probability of me picking a blue M&M? One, right? I have to. If I have a dice full of fives and I roll it, what's the probability of getting a five? Hundred percent, right? Or probability of one. So that's why one is included. All right. So number of outcomes in the event divided by the number of outcomes in the entire sample space. Why can our numbers only be between 0 and 1? Okay, percent, if you're looking and thinking of percentage, it's only from 0 to 100. So what about the probability, Adam? You can't have more like, favorable outcomes and total outcomes. Right. You can't have more favorable outcomes than total outcomes, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like if there's, if there's 20 green M&Ms in that bag, is it even possible for me to get... 21? No. no. Right? If I have a mix of M&Ms, I can't have more green than I do total. It doesn't make sense. So the number, because it's a subset. The reason why is because it's a subset. I always have a smaller possible outcome of events than I will sample space. Because your event is part of your sample space. All right, so we have our dice that has all 12 numbers on there. Okay. 
We said, what was the probability of rolling an even number? We said it was what? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, right? Because there were 6 out of the 12, so my probability of getting an even number is going to be 0. 0.5. So probability of event A is going to equal 0. 0.5. Okay. Um, my probability of rolling a number greater than 8. Well, what are those numbers? 9, 10, 11, and 12. So how many is that? That's 4 of them, right? So it's 4 out of the 12. So the probability of getting a number greater than 8 is going to be about 0.33 or one third. Right? These are going to be my two subsets for this first example. So subset A is the even numbers. Subset B is going to be the numbers bigger than nine or bigger than eight. Excuse me. All right. Let's make a Venn diagram out of this. Okay. Where do we always start in Venn diagrams? We start in the middle. Can I use these numbers more than once? No. no, I cannot. So once I cross it off, I cannot use it again. So first things first, where do A and B overlap? So we're looking for even numbers that are bigger than 8, that are less than 8. My goodness. No, greater than 8. I was right. Bigger numbers greater than 8, that's 10 and 12, right? So how many numbers is that? That is two numbers. So there are two numbers that they have in common. Oh, two numbers. Yeah, there's two numbers. We're doing total total amount of numbers, total amount of outcomes of rolling the dice. All right, that means how many is left that would just be even numbers? There are four numbers left that are just even. Right? Ooh, we have two, four, six, and eight left over. Does it make sense that four plus two is six? Because all of A is all the evens. All right, what's left in my circle B? So just the numbers that are bigger than 8, but they're not even. There's two, right? 9 and 11. So 9 and 11 are out. All right, last but not least, how many numbers did I not even include in those circles? There's four, right? These are the odd numbers that are technically less than eight. So one, three, five, seven weren't used at all, so they're going to be in space. Right? It just, that's where we usually put it. You can really put it wherever, as long as it's out in space. I'm going to give you a second. There's six Venn diagrams right there. They're all the same. So go ahead and fill in these numbers for all those Venn diagrams. Because we're going to use them over and over again. We're just doing different probabilities each time. So go ahead and fill these numbers in for all six of your Venn diagrams. All right. So the first probability it's asking of me is the probability of just circle A. Right? Did we already do that? What is in circle A? So it wants all of these. Hold on. Circle A is all of this. So what is included? All of circle A. Probability of circle A is what? is the 6 over the 12. Probability of A, meaning the probability of getting an even number, that's including all of circle A. I'm going to do a highlighter. It looks like I'm crossing it out if I do that. I want all of this. I want all of this. Everything in circle A is what it's asking me, which we already knew that. It was 0.5. All right? What's the one next to it? Not A. So if I don't want circle A, that means I want everything else. So I want, well, not all of circle B. you got to be careful. Right? Not circle A is all of this. Do we agree? Okay. Now, again, this is where the logic piece and your formulas are going to have to cross over. Logically, we see it is going to be 6 out of 12, right? Because I have a 2 and a 4 in my shaded region. 
That's just B, and that's what's out here in the on, in space. The formula we're going to use. If we want not A, and we already know what A is, I can subtract it out of my total probability. Okay? What is our total probability for the entire sample? Probability is 1 for the entire sample, right? I can take away from that the probability of A. Because I want not A, so everything else. So 1 minus the 0.5 we already know leaves me with 0.5 left. Okay? So not needs to translate as a subtraction. Not A means I'm subtracting A out of my sample space. Okay, so I'll answer that question again. I, I've explained this. I told you. We can logically look at that and say it has to be 6 over 12, which is 0.5. Right? Logically, you can do that. We cannot do it tomorrow. Okay? We have to be able to use these formulas. We have to be able to recognize not A means subtract A out of my sample space. Tomorrow, logic cannot help you. So we're mixing the two together today. Because logically, you can make sure our answer makes sense. That makes sense. If 50% were even, and I want not even, that means 50% are odd. Makes sense. All right? Stay with me. All right. This is the probability. What does, what does this mean? A and B, right? The intersection of A and B. So where do they intersect? Right here in the middle. So I want the probability of their intersection. Logically, what would you do? 2 over 12. So we know my answer has to be 1 over 6, which is about 0.167-ish, okay? But we're not doing logical today. We're doing formulas. So if I want the intersection of A and B, I can do... Did they do logical? They did do logical. We'll keep logical with this one. The intersection of A and B, I got ahead of myself, is 2 over 12, which gives me 1 over 6. Not for this one. I guess technically that is the formula version for this one. All right. Um, and you can put 0 0.67 next to it. 0 0.1. That's the same thing. Oop, not highlighter. That's not going to help me. Pin. That's the same thing as saying 0 0.167. Same thing. All right. All right, so we have the top three filled in, right? So I have probabilities listed that if they come up again, I can just pull from the information I already have. Just a little foreshadowing there. Why, why redo the math if you already know it, right? Moving forward. Probability of A or B, right? I want just circle A or I want just circle B. So just circle A or just circle B do we agree that that includes A and B? Yes. Remember because the word or meant the two different pieces? So I want all of A, which is this, or I want all of B, which is this. So it includes both complete circles. Logically, what would you do? You would add all the numbers up. 4 plus 2 plus 2, which gives me 8. Jacob, 8 over 12 simplifies to what? 2 over 3. Okay, so logically we know our probability is going to be about 0.67. Okay, formula-wise, we want even or we want numbers greater than 8. So that is going to be all of A plus all of B 
but we have to take out the intersection because that means we would count it twice if we leave it in there. So if I want all of circle A or all of circle B, I can add them together, those two probabilities, but take out where they overlap. Okay, so we already figured out what was the probability of all of A. That was the 6 over 12, which was the 0.5, right? What's the probability of just B? No. Just B is what? 4 over 12. Right? Did we already do it? Look right here. Probability of A, we already said was 0.5. Probability of just being a number bigger than 8 was 0.33. Okay, or one third, yep. And we have to take out what we just did, take out the intersection. Logically speaking, you add the numbers up. You're not wrong. Formula speaking, you add together the two complete circles, but take out the piece where they overlap because you don't want to count it twice. Mm All right, so that's going to give me about two-thirds. Isn't that what we said? Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing decimals, you're doing 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 minus 0.167-ish, and you should still end up with about 0.67. So you can say two-thirds or you can say 0.67. It's technically the same thing. Again, logically, we can check ourselves. I see 4, 2, and 2. That is 8 out of the 12. That does reduce. And I know it's faster, but tomorrow it's not even possible. Okay? All right, moving on. Next one, probability of anything in circle A, which is even numbers, and intersecting with not B, so not bigger than 8. So we're looking for what? We're looking for even numbers that are not bigger than 8. Does that make sense? So there's all my even numbers, right? That's all of my A. all of my A, and it's going to intersect with everything that is not B. So not B means still circle A, but it also means the outside. Okay, the symbol in the middle means where they intersect. So where do the shades intersect? Just the four, right? So logically, we can make sure I'm going to get the right answer. Logical, uh, highlighter go away. Logically, it is four. There are four numbers that are even and less than eight. So four over 12. So we can already predict that my answer is about 0.33 or one-third, okay? That's logically with my formulas. A or not B means I'm going to take my entire section of A, which I already know is 0.5, right? But I have to take out the B part because I want all of A but not B. So I have to take, around, take away this intersection, so probability of A minus the part that crosses over with B, because I don't want B. Remember, the not symbol, this what I call it, tilde, means to subtract. So our probability is 1, is 0.5. We're going to subtract from that the intersection, which was point, about 0.167.
common denominator if you're doing your fractions. So we get about 0.3, which is one third, which is the same thing as 0.33. So we got all my circle A, but not B. So we could not include that little piece that overlapped. So it was just this piece. This Pac-Man right here. Okay, we good? Kind of. Let's do more. Let's do more. All right, this is the last one, I believe. Not A intersecting not B. So not A means everything except the A circle, right? Not B means everything except the B circle. Again, this symbol in the middle means where do those two pieces intersect each other? So this right here means where do they intersect and where is that happening? Where are they intersecting? It's everything on the outside. All of that is not A and not B, right? So I can't be in any of the circles. So that means we're looking for odd numbers that are less than 8. So it's everything not included in my circles. Okay? So remember, the not, the tilde, means to subtract. So take my total space and subtract what I already know, which I already, I've already done. It was the fourth one, the probability of my circles. What was the probability of my circles? It was the first one on the second row. What was it? 0.67? Yes? So all my space minus the probability of being in the circle because I want what's not in the circles. Logically, what could you have done? 4 over 12, which gives us 1 third, which gives me 0.33. Again, tomorrow, can't do it. So we got to recognize that tilde means to do what? Yeah. Subtract something. Tilde means we're going to have to subtract out of our sample space. So we're subtracting the circles. <clears throat> All right, we're about to make our own Venn diagram. And answer some questions on that. Okay. One of the important addition rules that you're going to come across a lot is doing the or. This circle or this circle. Okay. A or B. What you do is you include all of A, all of B, and you subtract where they intersect. So this is what we did. Where did we do it? That's what we did in the fourth one. Well, you can't read red, can you? So you're taking all of circle A and all of circle B and you're taking out where they intersect. We do that because if we don't, we're counting something more than once. This is called the addition rule. It's going to come up often. All right, ready to talk about some Harry Potter and some Twilight? Whoop, whoop. Me too. It's on TV all the time. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Suppose it is known that 80% of high school students are Harry Potter fans. 
30% are Twilight fans and 20% are both. Okay, let's go ahead and make ourselves a Venn diagram to represent it. So let's label one of these Harry Potter, one of these Twilight. Okay, where do we always start in my Venn diagrams? The middle, good. So how many, What? what's the probability of both? 0.2, good, we're putting our probability in here. 0.2 are fans of both. That means how many are just Harry Potter? Point, point, just Harry Potter is point six. Remember, there is 80% that's Harry Potter. That whole thing should be point eight, right? I already have point two in the middle because they like both. All right, so what's left over for just Twilight? Point one is left. Because all of this should represent a probability of 0.3. I already have 0.2 in the middle. Um, what's the probability of someone not caring and doesn't like either one of them? 0.1, good. How'd you get that? 0.6 times 0.2, I mean, plus 0.2 plus 0.1 gives you 0.9, right? What is always the probability of the entire sample space? It's always one. So we have 0.1 probability that someone doesn't is not a fan of either one. All right. A couple questions here. What is the probability that a randomly selected uh, student does not like Harry Potter? Okay, does not like Harry Potter, so that means tilde H does not like Harry. <clears throat> So remember, not Harry means we have to subtract Harry out of the entire sample space. So what is the probability of someone liking Harry? What did we say it was? It's 0.8 for Harry, right? So I got to do 1 minus 0.8, which I'm left with 0.2. That represents just the Twilight and the I don't care people. Right? So no Harry Potter at all. All right, probability that a randomly selected student likes Harry Potter but does not like Twilight. Okay? So we like Harry, but we don't like Twilight. So I have to take all of A, right? but take out where they intersect it because I can't have any part of Twilight in this one. All right, we already know Harry is what? Probability. 0.8. And what's the intersection? 0.2. So we're left with 0.6. Does that make sense with my Venn diagram? Yeah, because that's, that's what was left over, right? So pay attention to the wordings. Likes Harry Potter, so you want H. Does not like Twilight. You gotta take get Twilight out of the Harry Potter. Okay. Questions. All right, probability that a randomly selected student likes Harry Potter or Twilight, okay? Isn't that my addition rule? Harry Potter or Twilight, isn't that in any of the circles? So I need to combine the circles together, but make sure I take out the overlap because that's where it got counted twice. So what's probability of Harry Potter in total? 0.8, probability of twilight total, 0.6, okay? I can't just add those together because isn't that going to be like 1.4? And we can't have more than one. So we got to, or whatever it was, we got to subtract out of it the 0.2. Sorry, that's 0.11. I can't add. 0.8 plus 0.3 is 1.1. I can't have it that big. Why did that happen? Because I got to take out the middle piece. 
which leaves me with 0.9. Logically, does it make sense? Yes, 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 gives me that 0.9 also. This is the addition rule that you had just you had just written down. This or that, that's the addition rule. Add up their totals, take out their intersection. All right, probability. Um, that a randomly selected student does not like Harry Potter or Twilight. Okay, does not like, does not like Harry Potter or Twilight. Didn't I just find Harry Potter or Twilight? So I want not that. So I need to subtract that out of my sample size. We just figured that out. That was going to be 0.9. 1 minus 0.9 gives me 0.1. Doesn't that make sense? I don't like either of them. I'm looking at the piece that's not in the circles. That's this. So that's the point one. Yes? Could you probability of not H or not T? Or does... Probability of not H or not T. It's like distributing it. Let me see, because we did that up here, right? Or oh, that was and. Yeah, not H there. or not T. Um, it should. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, you mean just how you wrote it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. They're asking me. So right here, they did probability of not Harry or not Twilight. That is technically correct also. Okay, so yes, that would work if you just did the tilde to each one. Because that, that is how it reads, so I get it. Does not like Harry or Twilight. So does not like Harry or Twilight. Does that make sense? Tilde is that little squiggle thing. Is this. This is a, this is a tilde. Yeah. All right. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a tree that shows all the possible outcomes. So someone could like both, right? Someone could like none. Someone could like just Harry. Someone could like just Twilight, right? There's four possible outcomes. So this is our tree. So we have Harry or not Harry. That's how the tree starts. I can do Harry and Twilight or Harry and not Twilight. The probability of liking Harry and Twilight. Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. So I can like both. I can like Harry and not Twilight. Other options. I could not like Harry, but I could like Twilight. Or I could not like either one of them. All right, probability of liking both Harry and Twilight. Where is that in my Venn diagram? It's the piece in the middle, right? It's where they intersect. So H and T is where they intersect, where H and T intersect together, which in my spin diagram is 0.2. Remember, the upside-down horseshoe is intersect. All right, probability of Harry, but not Twilight. So what part of my Venn diagram is that? That's all of Harry Potter, but not Twilight. So it should be 0.6, right? So if I'm doing Harry, but not Twilight, that's the probability of Harry and not Twilight. which leaves us with the 0.6. So Harry and not the intersection. All right, my last two pieces. Not Harry, but I like Twilight. So I like, I like the Twilight, but I don't like Harry, so I can't include that circle. So that means I'm going to take all of my 
and you can switch them if you want to. You could do twilight first. If you have T intersect with not hairy, that's the same thing. And what does that give me? 0.1. Last piece, I don't like anything. So, not hairy, not twilight. Means I am left with the point one. So no hairy, no twilight. I'm just the point one. All right. It's what? Oh, it's fine. Hey, you don't know. Nowadays, 